Hi guys, my name's Al Clark and I am a specialist automotive film director and filmmaker. And what that basically means is I spend my entire life going around the world, filming cars, bikes, people around cool cars, cool bikes, the stories involved around them, and generally having a lot of fun in between. But I wanted to take some time out of that and talk to you about a few of the cool things that we actually get up to behind the scenes and show you some cool stuff and kind of explain a couple of things. And what better way to start than talk about our zero to 400 kilometer back to zero film that we shot as a commercial for Bugatti back in 2017. Now, even though we shot that film two years ago, there was one shot that always springs up over and over again. And that is the single shot of the Bugatti going from zero to 400 kilometers an hour. It wasn't a Supra. Now we're going to show you exactly how we did that. Plus we're also going to have a look at some of the behind the scenes because there was an entire behind the scenes film shot which never got released, which is quite common unfortunately in a lot of these commercial projects. And remember, if you like these sort of videos, please let me know because I can make more of them. Um, and also I want to go and chat to some people and talk about some cool stuff and see some things. So let's go and do that together. So please subscribe and see if we can get this all going and do some cool stuff. On with the show. One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. Now, if you've not seen the original film yet, don't worry, I've put a link in the description so you guys can check that out before you carry on with the video. But if you have seen it, along with the 39 million other people that have, plus I think about 100 million people watch the single shot on social media, let's dive straight in. Now, the original concept for the film actually came about on the Chiron launch in Lisbon. And I became obsessed with this idea of a single car to car shot doing something approaching the car's top speed. Now, obviously, that wasn't going to be possible on Lisbon's highways, but the concept was sold into the girls at Bugatti, who were awesome, and we sort of they came up with this idea themselves with this kind of world record zero to 400 film. I love real speed in shots. I think it's so important the cars are doing something approaching their real speeds because when you start to speed up stuff, everything looks wrong. The suspension looks wrong, the way the cars compress and bounce and move, and you can see it a mile off if you know what you're looking for. And I was determined that that was not what we were going to do. I always remember this fantastic commercial that got banned, which was a BMW M5 tracking what was like a thrust SSC style car and the energy and the smoke and everything was amazing. And at the end of the film, it's revealed that it's an E39 M5 rigged to film the car. But even that was still some camera trickery. We wanted to go a step further and do the real thing. So it's decided that we would film at Erlesen in Germany, which is Volkswagen and Bugatti's own private test track. And it is the most incredible place. It has this huge, long, straight, flat piece of road, which literally cuts through the earth. You know, you can see the curvature. It is unbelievable. And then it kidney shapes itself around, which means that we could do multiple runs and it was safe to do because they've got animal sensors in the woods to see if there's deer about to run in front of your car while you're doing 267 miles an hour. So it is the most phenomenal place for doing this sort of thing. And then we had to get our crew together and that was a mix of English and German crews. We had on the English side, we had Bryn Mossel White who produces for me on tons of films. We had our VFX supervisor, Duncan Catterall, who was gonna be there just to sort of gather some data and do some behind the scenes filming. We had uh, Gina and Dean from Lunar Remote who are handling the flight head. And then on the German side, I was so stoked when we managed to get Rene and Daniel from Format 67, who are like, you know, the OGs of filming cars. You know, these guys have been doing it since 5Ds could film. And uh, I was really, really happy about that. And if you've not seen any of Format 67's work, you've got to go and check it out. Some of it's awesome, especially the NSX Nordschleife film, which is just a really cool piece of art, which they recently remastered. Okay, so we're gonna watch the behind the scenes now. I've not watched the behind the scenes for a while. I've been very careful to like not watch it and just not refresh my memory too much. So hopefully this is gonna be a bit of a, a reminder of what happened, but um, yeah, it's gonna hit play and here we go. All right, so Bugatti had like a self, uh, a self-inflicted maintenance schedule of the car just to make sure that everything was safe with Juan Pablo driving like so often and so fast. Um, in reality, we had absolutely no problems at all, but the idea was that we would change the tires every few runs just so that there was no hint of any danger. Um, most people, even in real life, aren't gonna be doing 247, 246 miles an hour every day, but we were gonna do it like a lot of times during these, uh, these shoots, so it's really cool. That's Daniel, who was our DOP. Daniel was great to work with, you know, we're both car people, we're both into old Japanese cars and stuff like that, so it was, it was really good to work with him. And, 
um, shoot stuff. Ah, now here comes the cage room. Now the cage room was provided by Format 67. That was the, uh, it was a solid frame car. It was really good actually. It kind of provided a lot of energy in the tracking shots that we did. Although again, it's not the car that we use for the tracking shots. Oh yes, oh my goodness, it rained. It rained, yeah, it rained heavily. So we had to get like three Chirons out and every other car that we had on the set to go and dry the track. And it was actually quite dangerous because we were thinking like, uh, I'm not sure we're even gonna get this film if it carries on raining like this. But fortunately, the rain held off, we're okay. We've got here some dolly shots going on with the car. That's the opening shot of the film. Uh, Bryn in the background. I forget the name of the driver, I feel really bad. Really, really cool guy, does some racing and stuff like that as well. Um, and that was his car. Bryn and me having constant chats about the weather, trying to hold off the helicopter, constantly trying to hold the helicopter off, thinking like, ah, oh, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Moving on. <laughs> Uh, because we didn't, we were miles down the track, so we didn't really break screen. So we used the bonnet of the Catrum as a as a shield against the reflections from the sky. Oh, the helicopter was awesome. It's the only way that you can do it on a film like this is you'd never be able to shoot this film with a drone. Um, a drone would be not only too slow, but just not able to stay in the air for long enough. You know, we had one hour of flight time with the helicopter, and he just absolutely made it awesome. Um, so I was in the helicopter uh, for all of this directing and Bryn was in the car below and we've actually removed Bryn from the passenger seat in all the, uh, in all the shots so that uh, you wouldn't realise that he was there. But he was communicating with Juan Pablo and just kind of keeping him company for an hour. Guys chucking another set of freshies on, set of Michelin Cup 2s. Oh look, there's all the sound being recorded. That's pretty cool. Ooh, that's good timing. So I guess we better talk about how we did that shot then. Okay, so here's how we did it. It was really, really simple. It wasn't another Supra, it wasn't a GTR, it wasn't a jet car, a jet bike, a camera on a cable, it wasn't a helicopter, it wasn't an aeroplane or anything like that. It was very simply another Chiron. Who knew? Although actually it was amazing to us how few people actually guessed it, but you know, it's one of those things that when something's too obvious, you almost can't think about it. Now the system and the cameras that we put on the back of the other Chiron was a little DJI X5 like this. Now this is a camera that you normally find on a uh, Inspire drone or something similar to that. And I've been filming some tracking shots and cars with these for quite some time because they're super helpful when you're on like a really small skeleton crew and there's only sort of a couple of you and you want to just get some cool tracking shots and it's not safe to hang out the back of a car or whatever you're trying to go fast or whatever. So that was the system that we put on. So then we used a slightly modified version of that, which was then supplied by my friend Ian May, who's a camera car specialist as well. Out of box, I was gonna use just the normal drone like I always use, um, but just for the sake of safety in film, we thought like, well, why not use that one? And we kept mine as a spare. And in fact, you can see it in this shot here, the drone in the box on the back of the car. And then it was simply a case of getting the cars to launch at exactly the right moment. And as you can see, you know, there were plenty of times when it went right and plenty of times when it went wrong. But what I found also quite interesting was that even with two of us in the lead car, that the hero car had no problem being any slower or faster. It was still the same speed. And I guess that's what one and a half thousand horsepower does for you. And the camera held on beautifully as well. There's no shake, there's no, in fact, we had to actually add camera shake back in because it was just a little bit almost lifeless. One thing that does annoy me when we filmed it and we didn't, you know, it was one of those last things that we filmed at the end of the day because it was the last thing we wanted to make sure that all the cars were safe for the filming and it was the last shot of the day. Where the camera was installed on the Bugatti 
meant that it was going to have to film essentially through the exhaust gases. So frustratingly, and this is something which we didn't realize until we got back into the UK, was that exhaust gas essentially was passing past the lens constantly, which basically makes it look a little out of focus, which was a little frustrating because it was bang on focus. One of those things that you don't realize until you get back and unfortunately, the ability to reshoot that is going to be 0%. So that was that, but it went in the film. It was sharp enough, but it, you know, it could have been a little bit better and we would have improved that had we spotted it, but we just didn't have the time. That is just one of those things of filmmaking. Well, that just about sums that up. It's been really awesome for me to go back over that footage and see it all again and talk through it with you. So I've really enjoyed it. I really, really hope you've enjoyed that too. Now I really want to continue this and I go and do more stuff, talk about more things and perhaps talk about more car filmmaking with people and or even just the car world in general. So please do subscribe, let me know that there's some support there and we'll go and make more of them. Hopefully see you around soon. Thanks. <laughs>